Welcome everyone. Jasmine Pather here with Photo Booth International Podcast. I'm super excited to have our special guest today. I have Natalie and Nick from Natalie Roberson Photography. They are a husband and wife photography team with over 12 years of experience. They're based out of Salina, Texas, and they love people and are passionate about photography. They've earned the reputation as one of the top portrait and wedding photographers in DFW. And I am, I'm a little bit biased because <laughs> Josh and I actually hired them to be our wedding photographers when we got married November of 2016. So um, Natalie and Nick, thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having us, Jasmine. It's so good to see you. Yes, thank you. Likewise. So like I said, um, for us, it's really special to have you guys on board because we've known you for a long time now. And when we were picking a photo booth, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm thinking photo booth. When we were <laughs> picking a photography, a photographer to go with for our wedding, I felt like we were very picky. And um, we actually met you guys at a trade show. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Josh, I really like their vibe. I really like them. I actually saw their website prior to meeting them. And so uh, that just kind of solidified everything because it just felt like, just really comfortable to talk to you guys and throughout the whole experience of you know my bridal portraits and then the day of the wedding it just really felt like we just had um, two extra friends with us throughout the whole day so I just wanted to throw that out there because you thank guys you. really are awesome well thank you we feel the same about you guys yeah. <laughs> awesome so um, we'll get straight into these questions so Obviously, um, you guys are husband and wife team working together. Can you tell us a little bit about how it is that, um, I think Natalie, you might have started in photography first. So can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up in photography and then at what point did Nick join your business? Sure. I've always liked photography, um, probably since high school. I just had a thing for always wanting to document things that were happening and just taking pictures and um, just kind of really started with my friends. And then once I got married and had kids, um, I kind of wanted to take pictures and growing up, we took pictures, but not very often. And I think it really struck me. And my mom, I give my mom a hard time about this still to this day. Uh, I have one scrapbook. And so I was like, how, you know, how is it that I've been around for 20 or 25 years and you have one scrapbook. <laughs> and so I wanted um, my kids to have their lives documented. And we, um, had some pictures taken and I just felt like, gosh, these aren't very good. And I felt like I could do better. And so I went back to school and, um, took some classes and bought some equipment and just kind of started it as a hobby. And then people were like, wow, your pictures are really good. You know, can you do mine? And, you know, then it was referrals. And, and I think with Nick, um, he just kind of saw how much fun I was having and was like, well, I kind of, want to help you. And so he would go with me and he, um, I think it grew on him too, because he eventually uh, quit what he was doing and came over to the photography business. And we've been inseparable ever since. I love that. And Nick, what were you doing prior to joining Natalie? So I was in, I was in real estate and I've always um, kind of been a technical numbers guy. And surprisingly, there's a very um, there's a very technical side to photography too. Um, and so I really enjoy the, uh, the lighting and the composition and the architectural side of photography. So um, as soon as I found that as an avenue to kind of help join in with her, I, I jumped on the opportunity. I see. Awesome. So I love that. So was it how long before uh, Nick kind of joined you full time? Um, Probably four or five years in. Yeah. It took a while. Okay. And um, when did you actually make that decision? Like what was a determining factor for you to say, okay, I think it's time for you to come and help me full time? Well, money, really. It was a matter of how much money I was bringing in. And I'm a, I'm a pretty competitive person. And so he gave me a number and said, when you can reach what I make or outdo me, then I will switch over. So once I got mm -hmm. that in my head, I'm pretty competitive. And so, <laughs> so like, I was like, I'm that. I'm yeah. going to go. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's such a, a great story because often um, I think a lot of people, even in our industry as photo booth owners, you know, they might start off just either the husband or the wife, and then eventually 
which is this, the case that happened with me and Josh, um, you get to a point where you're like, okay, things are growing rapidly. I need the help. And, and maybe you consider hiring people outside of, you know, your own circle, but they don't work out. And so exactly. you're like, okay, well, my spouse isn't going to let me down. They're going to exactly. show work. And that was the thing for us too, is that both of our professions were usually after hours and weekends. And we thought about it, um, you know, at the time our kids were little. And so it was a, you know, do I go over to real estate? Cause we, we contemplated that or do I ask him to come over here and work for me? Um, because doing it separately would have required us to hire other people at the rate we were growing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, cause it wasn't that real estate was less important and it just boiled down to really who was having more fun. Um, because I went to real estate school, I was seriously going to go that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but we just, it really, we, we love our job and it's just so fun. And I think we made the right decision. Yeah. Um, and so that's really what it boiled down to is, well, photography is a lot of fun and we get to meet a lot of people and we get to be, you know, creative and, um, yeah, it's just worked out for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you didn't go into real estate. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no way can I imagine not having you guys as our Oh, home. you're Thank sweet. You. Yeah. But um, being that, you know, I think that there's pros and cons to everything, right? So um, what would you say is, you know, how do you guys balance working together, but also obviously being um, a married couple, but also you guys have three beautiful boys. So how do you balance everything? Um, I would say that, you know, for the most part, um, you know, work stops at a certain point. Um, you have to find that barrier and put it up um, mm -hmm. because there's a, there is a, uh, it's difficult to not let that cross over into your personal life. Um, so we keep business decisions as business decisions and we keep family decisions as family decisions. Um, you know, we worked out of our house for a very long time, uh, up until a couple years ago when we opened the studio. Um, and, and that helped when we opened the studio, that really helped kind of delineate, uh, mm -hmm. where work stops and where home life begins. And it's actually been much easier since we've been able to do that because, okay. um, we can set up those barriers. Mm, I could see that. Yeah. Now that I think about it, whenever Josh and I went to, uh, our consult, our consult session with you guys, it was at your home. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And your youngest boy, uh, I can't Troy. remember. Troy. Troy, yes, he was so cute. He came over and like sat on my lap. Oh yes. Like, he was our he was our <laughs> he was our lead contract negotiator. He yeah. pretty much got yeah. everybody he seals, to sign. He seals the deal for us. <laughs> yeah, that's really what it was actually. Now that I think about it. <laughs> no, but um, can you tell me a little bit about um, how you guys handled disagreements? I mean, obviously. I know firsthand that Josh and I don't always agree on things related to business. So how do you guys work those situations out? Same. Uh, you know, Nick and I get along really well, but we are very different. Um, and I feel like I'm more business orient oriented and creative and he's very uh, funny and easygoing and technical, mm -hmm. which is great because I feel like we cover all the bases. And I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie in the beginning when we first got together in business um it was hard because we hadn't defined what everybody's role was um and so once we hashed that out and we knew okay you're in charge of this and i'm in charge of this it took the tension down and because everybody knew what their role was and what they were supposed to be doing and it just kind of um just made it easier so in the beginning it was rough and we would just kind of look at each other like my way is the right way, even though there wasn't really a right way. Um, but, you know, here we are 10 years into this and we know exactly what we're doing and I can just look at him and he and know what he's thinking and same for us. And so it's just, we know what we're supposed to be doing. We know what our roles are. Um, and the rest of it, we just kind of roll with the punches. So, um, cause you know, new people, uh, new situations arrive, um, circumstances change, you know, so we kind of, we're still learning and growing in this business and adapting and, you know, questions about contract or, you know, things happen. So we just kind of share our side and hopefully we can have like a middle ground. So, yeah, I think we were really good at, at defining roles. And then at the same time, even when we were defining those roles, we sat down and talked about, um, you know, at what point in time do we think either one of us are maybe stepping outside of those roles or maybe pushing that, um, 
even that roll a little further than it needs to be into another area. And so it really took a long time to, to see the gray areas that lie on the outside of some of those roles. But I think now it's, we're pretty solid. I don't, uh, I'll be completely honest and, and say we still have disagreements, but I mean, just a few times a year now, really. I mean, we're, we're really in tune with what each of us has to do to make this business successful. I love that. I think that's key. Definitely knowing your role and knowing each other's strengths, right? Because yeah. Natalie, I think you just did a great job complimenting Nick on how technical he is. And, you know, you gave yourself a pat on the back by saying, you know, you love to be creative. So knowing, knowing each other's strengths, I think is really the key. Yeah. Um, yeah. What advice would you have for anyone who's thinking about going into business with their, with their spouse? Just communicating. I mean, you know, really defining the roles, communicating, um, because everybody needs to feel um, like they're, they're valid and they're, you know, a part of the business and uh, that their opinion matters. And, um, you know, everybody wants to be appreciated and, you know, get pats on the back, like you're doing a great job. And you know what I mean? So uh, we still do that with us. You know, he still pats me on the back, great shoot today. And I'm like, you know, you're, he's constantly doing um, continuing ed classes for Photoshop. So I feel like we're growing as a business um, because our work just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, you know, I'm constantly like, this is amazing. This is awesome. So I just think, you know, you kind of have to keep <clears throat> doing the same things you would be doing if it were an employee to keep them. You still have to do that with your spouse. So mm -hmm. I think that that's. Yeah. And I think the biggest word that I like to use is, is grace because I really believe that you have to um, be patient you have to, um, um, you know, give credit where credit's due. I think that that's really key. I think it helps. And, and just, and just understand that not every decision is going to be right, whether it's your decision that was, that was incorrect or your spouse's decision that's incorrect. It's, it's, you know, allowing them a little bit of grace and knowing that you can move through it together. Definitely. Yeah. I think that that's very important. It's easy to get stuck in a day to day. Um, yeah. Especially after 10 years, 12 yeah. years. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like that's the case for, for us as well. We've been working together for, I think, seven years now. Yeah. So there's times when it, 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 it does almost become like just robotic, you know, not, not in a bad way, but just because you just kind of know what you need to do and you each have your role. So you just go about it. But it is important to slow down and acknowledge each other, like you just said, because sometimes, it, you know, we like to hear those things and, and it helps us stay motivated and it helps us know that we're appreciated by our partner and that together, you know, we, we can, we have this feeling of, okay, we can do this. We're doing a great job. Let's keep going. Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. Love exactly. that. Um, now tell me what are some of the biggest mistakes that you've made in business and how did you overcome them? I mean, we haven't really had, we've been very fortunate. We haven't had anything too crazy. I mean, we've had some, questions about pricing. Pricing is a big, big one, mm -hmm. whether people think you're too expensive or not expensive enough. Mm -hmm. Um, couple questions about our contract, which we, we had a lawyer draw it up and, and that's mainly for like events and weddings and, um, just people not used to having uh, a contract with a photographer. We do, uh, we do that. We do now mm -hmm. everyone will sign one, um, just to cover, you know, the studio or the equipment or just um, our professionalism and how we operate our business. But most of the time, I mean, we haven't had anything out of the ordinary, um, but every instance that we do have, we, we learn from it and we, you know, try to sit down, sit and, down make, and make it better yeah. or easier or uh, whatnot for the clients. Cause our goal is just, we want um, a positive, memorable experience from everyone that walks through our door. Um, no matter what it is, no matter if it's a newborn, a senior, a family, a wedding event, we want them to be like, that was the best time I had. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our goal at every session. And so when we don't get that, which isn't very often, it does bother us. We kind of take it personally, even though we're trained not to, mm -hmm. you know, because photography is um, subjective. So we know not everybody is going to love our artwork, but I do. And so it's very, you know, hard to be like, why don't you love it? So. Um, yeah. And I think too, that, you know, I think in the beginning too, trying to be um, everything uh, at once was probably the biggest mistake we made. Mm -hmm. I think along the way, what we realized that 
there are people out there that are really good at designing websites and there are people out there that are really good at drawing contracts and there are people out there that are really good at lots of different things. And so as soon as you can kind of give up some of that control and let other people do what they're best at, which is kind of how we operate so well as a husband and wife too, Mm -hmm. is by finding other people's strengths. Um, Business becomes much easier. It does cost more and it is an investment in yourself. Um, But what we found is that utilizing people that are professionals uh, for certain things always turns out to be worth its weight in gold. 100% agree with that. I would say it's pretty similar to what we've experienced um, in business together. There were times where we tried to do things ourselves and it didn't look as clean or professional as it could have. And so working with like a professional graphic designer, um, everything looks very cohesive. It has a nice flow. Everything matches. And that's one thing that we try to tell our customers, right? Because they'll get stuck on um, thinking they have to create their own templates for their, their printouts, right? And I mean, you can pay someone five, ten dollars that, that just cranks it out in 15 minutes and something that you at least just not know, have to know how it's done, but you don't have to necessarily know Photoshop and sit there exactly. and, exactly. and take a full course because that's not your strength. Maybe you're a people person, so you need yeah, to right. focus on building relationships. So Again, it all ties back to knowing your strengths, right? Like it really does. Yeah, I think really I think does. that's the key. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, I'm very familiar with your services, and I know why I chose you guys, why we chose you guys to to photograph our wedding. But how would you say that you stand out from the competition? Because obviously, there's tons and tons of photographers here in DFW. Uh, there, there are some that are kind of up and coming, and I'm sure even throughout this lockdown, some people are deciding, okay, I don't want to do corporate. I want to chase yeah. after my dream, and I want to be a photographer. So, how do you um, stand out from the competition? Um, you know, for me, it really does come down to the experience. Um, I know that that word gets used a lot, but I think that Natalie and I, you know, given our years of experience with photography, um, that certainly helps, but I really feel like the end user experience is the most important. Um, We really do try our best to make relationships when we have new clients, Mm -hmm. people that we plan on seeing more than just once. Um, You know, the studio in Salina is is, um, second to none in DFW. Um, We've really put together something that we feel is special, it's different. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I do feel like our, our, our process from beginning to end um, is different than anybody else in the Metroplex, but we really do want to help people get to the ultimate goal of getting those portraits that they always dreamed of. Photography in and of itself is very subjective. There's a lot of people out there that wouldn't know the difference, or actually maybe not know the difference, but wouldn't even be able to describe what is good and what is bad because it's mm-hmm. very it's subjective. Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't really come down to that. It comes down to having a client that leaves happy, that leaves satisfied, that found value in what it is that you gave them, regardless of the price. Um, I think that's really what it comes down to. I think that's how we separate ourselves. Our clients, we have, I think we have over 900 positive reviews now um, mm-hmm. across all of our platforms. And that's because people are very happy when they leave our studio. Yeah, that, that's right. All of your reviews are very positive. And um, you guys do a great job at sending out those reminders Mm -hmm. to review because I think it's very important. Yeah. Some companies, they don't realize how important that is. You know, they're doing all the other right things, but the first thing someone does when they're trying to figure out whether they want to go with this photographer or that photographer is they'll look at the reviews, right? That's all they have to kind of base things off of. So I think that you guys do a great job sending out those um, email um, reminders. Hey, we really enjoyed photography, you know, the photography session with you. Don't forget to leave us a review. So Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's great because some people don't think about that. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I I also want to add that I think that your mobile track for headshots is so cool. Um, (laughs) I have to, I have to like insert a picture or something of it because I had never seen anything like it until you guys came up with that idea. And you guys have been doing that for what, over a year now, right? Yes. Well, right now um, it's out of commission. It needs some work done, but yes. um, The goal was we actually took a trip to um, 
California and we had saw uh, a company out there doing it and we did some research and there was only one other person in Texas that had had done that and so we actually reached out to them and asked them some questions about um, you know their business and how it was working out and that's when we decided to do it. And it, it, it came in handy a lot for really the larger jobs mm -hmm. um, you know uh, one-off jobs were still great to do at the studio but if you had a large company that needed 20 or more Mm -hmm. um, it made sense to go to them. Um, and it, it, you know, it was really more of, it was really more in the best interest of the company because exactly. no downtime, they could do several employees at once, mm -hmm. you know, um, it just worked out well in those situations. Super convenient for both parties. I think, I mean, and it looks cool. <laughs> and, cool. Yeah. and whenever they look at the company on LinkedIn, all of their headshots look uniform. And exactly. exactly. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very much branding. Consistent, professional, mm -hmm. uniform. Yeah. yeah, that's something that that we need to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so another reason why I wanted to have you guys on the podcast is because given the current situation with, you know, um, the virus, we've seen a lot of different things, right? We've seen some companies just completely like almost disappear. It's like they just stopped posting. They stopped interacting. Uh, we don't, we don't know what's happening with those businesses. And then there's others that have completely changed their model and come up with such creative ways of, of still promoting their services or, you know, if the service they were offering before is no longer, you know, something that something that people are wanting or can have, they, they completely were able to pivot. So I noticed that you guys offered some really awesome new services. So I would love for you guys to talk about them and how it is that you guys came up with those. Sure. Um, you know, for us, this is our livelihood. You know, this is how we take care of our family. We put them in school. Um, and so this is a full-time gig for us. And it's been that way, you mm -hmm. know, for, for many, many years. And now that we have the studio, we have those expenses as well as our home and that, you know, whatnot, which I understand most um, people have the same expenses as we do. Um, but failure is not an option for me. And so, and I uh, love what I do and I'm very passionate about it and I just did not want it to end. And mm -hmm. so, I, you know, when they shut us all down, it was very scary because if we're not working, we are not getting paid. Like we don't have some other person paying a salary or paying our bills. And uh, so we had to be proactive. You know, what could we do with the changing times to get money coming in the door? Um, because not having money was not going to be an option for us. And so, you know, we're part of a lot of groups on uh, photography groups on Facebook. We have um, some good friends that are photographers. And so we can bounce around ideas. But really, it just boiled down to what can we do that's safe, you know, and that followed the guidelines and still um, would bring in money and that people would be interested in. And so we thought about the porch portraits because we were, I could be at the sidewalk or even across the street with my 70 to 200 lens mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be anywhere near them. Um, and so we started doing that. Well, actually, we offered it to our neighborhood and they loved it. And then um, I posted a couple of pictures and people in other neighborhoods were like, can you come to our neighborhood? Yes. And so then it just kind of spread like wildfire. And I'm grateful because, again, it, you know, it put money in our pockets so that we could buy food and we could pay our bills um, and just kept business going. Well, then we didn't know how long that this was going to last. And so then mother's day hit and we started making yard signs and then graduation graduation signs and some people were like well could you make a birthday sign and we're all I'm like i can make anything you want <laughs> so it just kind of you know we just had to get creative and again not not all not all of those ideas were ours off the bat like she said we're, we're lucky to be part of a community that i believe photography in most respects is community over competition Mm -hmm. And I think people share ideas in attempts to know that um, we're, we're helping all in, this we're all in this together, you know. And so, um, you know, taking some of those ideas and putting our own spin on them, um, you know, was kind of was kind of how we got started on a lot of that stuff. I love that. I mean, as soon as I saw those uh, those front door portraits, family portraits, I showed Josh, and I was like, "They are so creative. I <laughs> would have never thought of that." <laughs> But and, I remember, and it was a great way to document a, a very awkward time, yeah. you know, and um, I think the, the, the families that chose to participate mm -hmm. were extremely happy. Um, you know, we've got lots of um, 
positive reaction from both the families as well as um, you know some media outlets and things like that. I think it was a good way to cheer people up who had been otherwise holed up in their homes for several weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gave them an excuse to kind of Get uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> well, that's, I mean, ironically, that's probably yeah. what we heard the most was, you gave me something to do today. Thank you. I got dressed. I got to put on my clothes. <laughs> yeah. So. But I mean, yeah, I mean, regardless of how, you know, unexpected and, and unfortunate this whole situation is, I do think a lot of great has come out of it. It's forced people to get their creative juices flowing, but also it's forced families to actually spend quality time together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to document that, I mean, this is going to go down in history, you know, oh, <laughs> there's going to be books and, and, you know, we're going to be in history books. And, and I know that future generations to come will have to, discuss this in history class and for you guys to have been able to document that and for those portraits to be passed on generation to come and you know and, and for that story to follow right photography is all about storytelling i think yes. yeah and so the the portraits that you've taken will tell that story of this is what happened 2020 exactly. when it was supposed to be the best year ever <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah it, it will Yes, it's still, yeah, it still will. I think it's all about perspective, but um, yeah, I just love that. And I think another thing I want to commend you guys on is not only just being so relatable and personable and just feeling like I'm talking to friends, but also um, I love that you uh, showcase all of the awards that you guys have won over the years on your website. Oh, thank because, you. Because again, um, it just shows further proof, right, that whoever's thinking about doing business with you is making the right choice because I mean if I just read some of these off you guys seems like ever since I found you guys for our wedding you guys have always been the not best of weddings uh, oh you're hall of fame now uh, <laughs> couples choice awards you got um, best of living 2019 expertise I mean you guys have tons of awards so uh, I think that's amazing but I think most of that, and I can actually probably say all of that, and all of our awards are mostly based off of um, client voting or client mm -hmm. appreciation, client reviews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so as much as I like to say that, you know, Nally's a wonderful photographer and I'm great at Photoshop, it really just comes down to making other people happy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what all those awards I think stand for. And it brings credibility to, like you said, an otherwise pretty saturated market. Mm -hmm. um, it brings credibility to what we do as professionals. Yeah. I think as long as we always focus with the end goal of having a happy customer, yes. then you can, never, you can never lose, right? Even if exactly. photography is subjective and maybe someone gives you a three out of five, I mean, that's one out of probably, you know, 200 people that ever are not 100% satisfied. But Absolutely. I think that you guys just do a great job at what you do. Um, you really have a gift. And I think it's also a gift that you guys can work together because I know there's many couples that can't. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So where can people find you um, if they're in DFW? I know you guys travel. I think I saw that on your Instagram, mm -hmm. but where can people find you if they want to see more about um, who you guys are and your photography? Well, we, right now we are at home, yeah. <laughs> um, but usually they can always visit the website. They can, yes, yes. They can visit the website, which is uh, www.natalierobersonphotography.com. Mm -hmm. um, now he's got, we've got Instagram pages. We've got um, Pinterest pages. We've got a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We have um, Twitter, but I'm not a fan of Twitter. We're not, we're not tweeting. <laughs> <on the line. laughs> but uh, I'm there. So. Um, but yeah, that's probably the best way. And they're always welcome to, to make an appointment, come out to the studio. We do a ton of consultations mm -hmm. totally understand that people need to see touch feel smell whatever they need to do in order to make an investment like sometimes it requires with mm -hmm. um with us and so they come out to the studio and check it out you know um we meet for coffee we do lots of mm -hmm. appointments things like that and we also mm -hmm. go on location too so yeah mm -hmm. yeah Definitely. Um, I think it's really important for them to meet you guys. I think they'll get that vibe right away, like, just like we did. And like, oh, these could be my best friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I could see them partying with us at the wedding. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we saved that to the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on today. I think you guys gave some really valuable um, feedback on, you know, what, what it's like to work with your spouse 
and you know figuring out ways to stay creative and relevant during tough times I think there's a lot that um, people can take away from this session. So thank you again. Thank for you very you. much. Yes, thank you for our PBI it. podcast. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so you, much. And, and, and tell Josh I said hi to you. I will. Yeah, yeah thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.